Dear Heavenly Father, thank you very much for today. It's a beautiful July 4th. Actually, it's kind of windy out there, but you have plans for today, Lord, and I appreciate that, and it's a cool weather, and I have my window open still, and I'm just getting through the day, Lord. I had a rough morning, but I got up and uh, did what I could to try to stay motivated, Lord, and utilizing the tools that I've been given, and Facebook, and a little bit of YouTube, I've been able to do that throughout today. Thank you very much for all of your blessings that you give me. Thank you for all of the future blessings that you will show in front of me. And uh, as I know, it will all be for your blessing and for your glory. I also definitely want to say that anyone who hears this prayer know that they can also pray, that they have a sensible knowledge that you will listen and you will give them answers in one way or another. And I think it's a good thing that pr people take time out of their day to pray. And so with that, I will say amen. Well, hello, everybody. I realized uh, in the last couple of days I did screw up yet again trying to do a daily video. Um, I'm actually going to do three readings today because I realized I read the wrong month. Uh, on July 2nd. I actually read June 2nd's reading. So I want to read June 2nd, June 3rd, and then obviously June 4th. So I think what I'm going to do is instead of going to the inspirational re reading today, since I messed up, I hope you guys will forgive me. Um, but I think instead of going into the uh, study and encouragement, I will just tell you where to look for it if you want to do further study, as I will do on the side. But since I screwed up, and I messed up, and I didn't do what I keep promising myself to do, I'm going to make it up for in this one video. So hopefully it won't be too long, um, and you guys will get something out of it. And what each day, maybe you think about what Think about what happened on June 2nd, June 3rd, and what's going to happen today, if any of this applies to you. So, um, with that said, I definitely want to proceed. But, oh wait, before we proceed, I want to say, if you found this channel by circumstance, but you like it, uh, give it a thumbs up, and subscribe, and hit the notification bell. If you find this, found this channel because it fell in your notifications, and you're like, what? is this it's not for me do me a favor pass it on to somebody who it is and so that way my that way my channel can find its way to still be growing and still add uh sub subscribers slowly uh as each day goes i think I've, i'm averaging one or two sub sub subscribers per every other day so it's a slow rising but it's good and it's exciting so um, if it is for you, great, hit the subscribe button. If it's not, pass it on to somebody who can uh, be able to worship it. I'm pretty sure all of us have someone that we know will in that does enjoy uh, wonderful readings um, and uh, can get something out of it. But so before I make this video way too long, let's get right into it. It's, uh, the name of the author is Paul David Tripp. Uh, a daily gospel devotional, and the morning and the name of the book is called New Morning Mercies. All right, let's get let's get going. Uh, like I said, we're going to do July second, July third, and July fourth since I did it wrong. So here we go. July second, corporate worship is designed to turn your heart from the shadow glories of creation to the glory uh, that will satisfy it. It was a warning to the children of Israel, but it was one who we all need to hear and heed. And when the Lord your God brings you into the land that he swore to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, to Isaac, and to Jacob, to give to you with great and good cities that you did not build, and houses full of all good things that you did not fill, the 
cisterns that you did not dig, and the vineyards and olive trees that you did not plant. And when you eat and are full, then take care of lest you forget the Lord who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. It is the Lord your God. You shall fear him. You shall serve, and by his name you shall swear. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of gospels, who are around you for the Lord your God in your midst in a jealousy, God, lest the anger of the Lord your God be kindest kindled against you and he and he destroyed you from off the face of the earth. Deuteronomy six ten through fifteen. This side of the eternity maternal material affluences is dangerous. It's not that material things are bad in in and of itself. God intentionally designed his, his world to be beautiful, to be a beautiful place. It's not that it's wrong to enjoy the material world around us. God gave us the capacity to take in and enjoy this beautiful, our beauty. In fact, God placed its desire for beauty in our hearts. The problem with material things is not found in the material things. It's found in us. Our problem with the material world is a heart problem. These problem, or this problem, is captured here. But God's by God's warning to His people as they enter a land flush with physical glories. The problem is that material affluences. Affluence has the power to cause us to forget God. The sight, sound, touch, taste, and splendor of these created glories tempt us to think that life is found in having these things and to think we have everything that we need because we have them. Because these things weak our, uh, weaken our God awareness and our God anger, we are then to set up to get then we are then set up to give our hearts to wor- to the worship of it, its created rather than the worship of the one who created it all. At street level, we forsake the God who created and supplied us with these physical glories, even though we continue to say that we believe in him. The warning can be stated in a few words. Be careful when you f- you're full that you do not forget the physical world is full of many glories, but the pursuit of the glories must not rule my heart because they have no ability whatsoever to offer me the life that I so desperately need. Life is only ever found in what all those earth-bound glories point to, a God of awesome glory who is the source and giver of life, the light uh, the life that satisfies and remains forever because he is a God of grace. He he showers glories on me so that those glories would lead me to him. For further study and encouragement, Deuteronomy 9. July 3rd, Jesus paid it all. There is no bills due for your sin. You are new You are now free to simply trust and obey. Stop trying to earn something from God. Stop trying to gain more of his acceptance. Stop trying to earn his favor. Stop trying to win his allegiance. Stop trying to do something that would pay for his blessing. Stop trying to morally buy your way out of his anger. Stop trying to reach a level where you will know lasting peace with him. Just stop trying. Just stop. So many Christians load onto their shoulders a burden that they do not have to bear. They get up every morning and pick up the heavy load of trying something or trying somehow, some way to achieve something with God. They work hard to exercise what they do not have in hopes they can achieve what is impossible. It's it simply cannot work. So whether so, where does it lead? It leads either to the scary pride of self-righteousness, a culture of moralistic self-backslappers, 
who have no, uh, no problem judging those who have not achieved the level of righteousness that they think they have or to fear and discouragement a culture of people who don't run to God with their sin because they're afraid of him Paul wipes out th this distorted uh, deb debilitating by your way into grace culture with a striking ec economy of words now it's evident that not uh, that no one is justified before God by the law Galatians 3:11 it is a, it is a statement that requires no preamble and no amendment no one is ever accepted by God because he or she has kept the law no one that it no compromises and no deals are needed. They are not needed because, uh, because first, it is impossible to buy your way into God's favor because sin makes you a law breaker. And second, your bills were fully and completely paid in, this, in a single payment of the cross of Jesus Christ. Christ did not make the first payment on your moral more, uh, mortgage. He paid your he paid your entire moral mortgage in one single payment, so that you could live in the relationship to God debt free forever. God's law is not your payment plan, because there is no pl uh, payment plan when the demand of a mortgage have been satisfied once and forever in the single payment. So stop trying to measure up to get whatever from God. Stop hiding from Him when you mess up. Stop comparing yourself to other people, wondering if God loves you less because you're not as good as them. Stop naming the good things to do as righteous that, uh, that not only get you, gets you closer to God, but also proves to others that you are just stop asking the law to do what only grace can achieve and start resting in the fact that you don't have any moral bills due because Jesus paid them all on the cross. And when you sin, don't pretend you didn't. Don't panic and don't hide. Run to Jesus and receive mercy in your time of need, the kind of mercy he paid for you to have. For further study... Uh, and encouragement, Isaiah 53. All right, July 4th. Today, yay, catching up. When you're weary with the battle, rem remember that the only one is your strength. Never take a break, never need sleep, never grows weary. Life in this fallen world is wearisome. Sometimes you, your marriage is just exhausting as you work to make a sinner married to a sinner coexist in love and peace. Sometimes it's just plain tiring to be a parent, particularly on those days when it seems that your children have com conspired together to be corporately rebellious. Sometimes you don't feel like being nice to the ne that neighbor who seems to be able to look at everything and find a reason to complain. Sometimes you just get exhausted with dealing with your heart. You know, those desires you shouldn't have had, or should, yeah, shouldn't have, and those thoughts you shouldn't think. Sometimes you have to drag yourself to your church service you, um, or your small group. Sometimes you just like to get off the Christianity treadmill and zone out, but you can't. You wake up the next day and you have to do it all over again. Another temptation, another marital misunderstanding, another conflict with another friend, another resistant child, or another moment when you feel the emotional temperature change. When you're weary and feeling weak, run to Psalms. There's a grace to be found there. I lift, up, I lift my eyes to the hills from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let you full foot He will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. Behold, he who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. 
The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. And and, uh, the sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your Go, uh, keep your going out and uh, your coming in from this time forth and forevermore. Psalms 121. This psalm confronts you and me with two truths that we must always remember first. Remember, first, we are not uh, in this battle alone. We have a keeper and our safety is his commitment. Second, the one who is our keeper never, ever takes a break. He keep he's his keeping care is twenty four seven, forever and ever. The the inexhaustible keeper is your help and strength when weary. Run to him. For further study and encouragement, Psalm ninety one. Well, that ends today's message. It wasn't too too long. A little bit longer than my normal videos. I want to say thank you very much for joining. If you made it all the way through, God bless you. And I think that I'm blessed if anyone and everyone listens to my videos from start to finish, uh, helping with my watch hour times um, to help my channel grow. So I appreciate you all. Any one of you who are new, any of you who are actually listening as you join to be a subscriber, thank you very much. You're a blessing. And as always, God is is a wonderful, wonderful human, uh, is a wonderful being, and he is overflowing with love, therefore allowing me to overflowingly love each and every single one of you. Uh, I understand the uh, thoughts of sin and sins of others and this and that, but God is, gives us the grace to know that we can always come to him and believe in him and that our sins are always washed away with with the death of Jesus Christ on our cro- in the on the cross so that makes me know that i can love each and every single one of you regardless of your sin regardless if you are a christian regardless if you're not a christian i love each and every single one of you and i hope to be reaching out to you tomorrow you all have a blessed wonderful day bye now